Hello everyone and welcome back. And now in this video, I'll be talking about the or deriving the derivatives of some common functions like x to the n, sine x, tan x, sec x, e to the x, and ln of x. And the reason for me doing this is because very often people just treat calculus as a bunch of rules and formulas that they need to memorize and to, in order to pass the class and I think that just takes the, all the fun out of it and really makes it like some chore and I hope that by showing you how a lot of these formulas come into being and how they're all related to each other I hope that you'll enjoy it a lot more and that it will also be a lot more interesting for you so first let's begin with the most commonly found or commonly encountered function that is let f of x be of the form x to the n that is where x is a variable and n is some uh, fixed quantity it could be an integer it could not be an integer it will still work so now what we will be doing is we will be deriving the formula for the derivative of x which is actually in this case it is n times x raised to n minus 1 and the way we will be doing this is by using the definition of the derivative that we saw in the previous video so Let's just recall what that is. We know that f dash of x is nothing but limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x by h. Now, what you could do over here is uh, simply substitute the quantities and it will all fall in place actually. So, here we have uh, f of x plus h will be nothing but x plus h raised to n minus x raised to n by h and what we will do over here is actually expand this bracket that we have over here using the binomial theorem now we know that uh, x plus h raised to n can be written as uh, nc0 times uh, x raised to n plus nc1 into h into x raised to n minus 1 and so on and so forth until we get the final power of ncn into h raised to n minus x raised to n. The whole thing will be divided by h. Now we can further simplify this by substituting nc0 as 1 so that it actually turn out to be x raised to n and c1 is nothing but n times h raised to x raised to n minus 1 plus and some other real quantity that we really don't care about plus uh, h raised to n just to show the final quantity and cn is 1 minus x to the n the whole thing by h and so over here we can cut the x to the n um, over here and what we are left with is the rest that is n, to n into h raised to x, x raised to n minus 1 the rest of the binding will expansion basically now over here note something all the terms that follow this have at least one power of h that is this first term over here has power of h is equal to 1 the next term will have power of h being equal to 2 and so on and so forth until we finally reach the last term which has the power of h being equal to n and what I have forgotten to write in all these expressions over here is basically that all of this is the limit as h tends to 0 so remember that all these values of h are tending to 0 so what I can do over here is, since there is a value of, that there's at least one power of h in all of these terms, what I'll do over here is, uh, limit as h tends to 0, I'll take an h out, out of all the expressions, and what I'll be left with then is n times x raised to n minus 1, plus h into x raised to n minus 2, and so on and so forth until I have h raised to n minus 1, the whole thing divided by h. And we can simply divide the h out in both the numerator and the denominator. And what we are left with is simply this. We are left with the limit as h tends to 0 of n raised to x minus x raised to n minus 1 plus h into x raised to n minus 2 dot 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 plus h raised to n minus 1. And since all of these values except the first one over here tend to 0 because all of them have a term of h everything except n times x raised to n minus 1 becomes 0 and what we are left with that is f dash of x is nothing but n x raised to n minus 1 
which is our expression for the derivative of x raised to n. And this is our expression. So once you see this proof, it really becomes interesting to and it's pretty interesting to see just how these uh, formula formulae come about and it becomes all the more fun, I believe. And now we'll move on to the next function that is f of x being sin x. And I will not be deriving uh, the derivative of cos x because they are quite similar. All you need to do is you need to follow the same process and you will come to the same conclusion. So over here again we follow the definition of the derivative f dash of x is equal to limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x by h and then what we can further add this as is limit as h tends to 0 of sine of x plus h minus sine x by h and then what we will do over here is we will apply the compound handle formula for sine of x plus h and with that we can we we'll get some terms that we can finally simplify and work with so we can again we can write limit as h tends to 0 of sine x uh, cos h plus uh, cos x uh, sin h minus sin x by h now what I'll do over here is I will take a few terms common I will write this whole expression over here again and I can take sin o x and cos h minus 1 uh, what I've done over here is basically I've taken the sin x common from the first term and the last term over there now basically written cos h minus 1 in that place and then we have h over here and I can also write this as cos x times sin h by h. Now if you have done a few basic limits you know that uh, sin h by h is a very common limit that is limit as sin h by h actually tends to 1 and I also made a video on this limit um, which you can refer to if you wish to. And on the other side we have uh, cos h minus 1 and those of you who have done a bit of trigonometry know that this is a pretty common identity that is 1 minus cos h is actually equal to 2 sin square h by 2 so this would actually be equal to minus 2 sin square h by 2 because we've got cos h minus 1 and not 1 minus cos h so this can further simplify to limit as h tends to 0 of sin x into minus 2 sin square h by 2 by h plus and if we apply the limit for the other side that is sin h by h we can simply write this to be equal to cos x without the limit. Now if I were to further simplify this I could write this to be equal to the limit as h tends to 0 of minus sin x times now I can group a sin h by 2 in the numerator with an h by 2 in the denominator. So if I were to write this I could be written as sin h by 2 by h by 2 and then I still have one sin h by 2 remaining. So that's what I'm going to keep, keep over here. Now you might say that I had h in the denominator and not h by 2. Well, I can simply multiply it over here to sort of nullify the h by 2 that I've added over here such that we still have just h in the denominator. And there's also the 2 in the numerator that I forgot to write. So I can cut them off. But you'll see it really doesn't matter at this point because this over here, this limit I have over here, this is equal to 1 because it's nothing but sin x by x. And on the other side, we have sin h by 2, the lone term of sin h by 2, which tends to 0 because h tends to 0, so it's basically sin 0. And this whole term over here actually just becomes 0. So what we have just remaining over here is cos x. And so in the end, which is not there in the screen actually. So let me just do that down. Yeah. So what we have remaining over here is simply cos x. And so finally, what I can write is uh, if f of x is equal to sin x, then f dash of x is simply equal to cos x, which is what we set out to prove. With this, uh, you can also, using the same principle of uh, expanding the compound angle identity, you can uh, also find the derivative of cos x using this method. So I will leave that up to you.
and instead we'll move on to the derivative of tan x. Now again, we can let uh, f of x be tan x for the purpose of finding our derivative. So f of x is equal to tan x and therefore the definition is that we have over here f dash of x is equal to the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x by h as the whole thing as h tends to 0. Therefore, f dash of x, if I were to substitute tan x in here, it would be tan of x plus h minus tan x by h. And again, we'll use the compound angle formula over here, but why I specifically chose to do tan x and not uh, cos x is because the compound angle formula in this case is not exactly the same. So what you would have over here is uh, tan x plus tan h by 1 minus uh, tan x tan h minus tan x and the whole thing by h. So again if we were to keep simplifying this what we would turn out with is uh, tan x plus tan h and now I'm going to take the common denominator so what I'll end up with is uh, minus tan x plus I'm running out of space over here. It's so, tan square x and tan h. Then the whole thing by 1 minus tan x tan h into h. And clearly one thing I can like do in the numerator is simply cut the tan x over here. And what we'll then be left with is simply tan h into 1 plus tan square x. And for those of you who are familiar with your trigonometric identities, we know that tan 1 plus tan square x is nothing but 6 square x. Let me just write this down and I'll put the 6 square x in the next step. This is 1 plus tan square x by 1 minus tan x tan h into h. So what this simplifies down to, now again I have forgotten to put the limit as s tends to 0 in all the expressions. Let me just put that this here to emphasize the fact that yes, there is the limit. this is the limit as s tends to 0. And now again I'll ask you to notice uh, tan h by h. Tan h is nothing but sin h by cos h and so I can further add that as sin h by h by cos h. Let me just write that down. So this is sin h by h and then there's a cos h over here as well. The limit as h tends to 0 of uh, then 1 plus tan square x is nothing but 6 square x and then in the denominator we also have 1 minus tan x tan h. Now again limit as s tends to 0 of sin h by h is just 1 and limit as s tends to 0 of cos h will be 1 because uh, cos 0 is 1 and again and 1 minus tan x by tan h as the tan h tends to 0 the whole term over here will become 0 so what will be just left in the denominator is nothing but 1. So the whole result is nothing but so I'll write 1 by 1 into 6 square x by 1. So clearly f dash of x that is the derivative of tan x is simply 6 square x. And well, that is it for tan x. And I'm afraid this is it for this video because if I were to continue with the other three derivatives in this video this will become part close to half an hour and my experience with uploading half an hour video in the past hasn't been too positive so i think i'll just end the video now and do the other three derivatives in the next video and then hopefully the chain rule and along with the product rule and the quotient rule in the video after that so this is it for this video and thanks for watching